it's actually nearly 12 o'clock i'm starting this vlog late because it's just been a bit of a busy morning <laughs> you've probably see all this mess behind me we don't have any heating at the moment because our bathroom radiator needs replacing jay's doing a diy he's replacing it and we've had to order different radiators different parts and while all of that is happening we can't turn the heating on so it's a little bit chilly but that's why all this stuff is here because yeah we're doing the bathroom radiator basically i haven't actually done any skincare yet today i just i went to the gym this morning came home had breakfast and then got straight onto some calls and doing some work and i kind of delayed part of my morning routine so i'm going to do it now quickly with you over the past I want to say maybe four or five months actually i've been using this brand you to the people and they recently sent me this i don't know whether it's a new launch but it's their triple peptide and cactus oasis serum this stuff is so good and i feel like it's actually stopping my skin from being like really dehydrated and dry as the weather's starting to change i always have to up my skincare this time of year and this has just been a really lovely addition so in the mornings i'll cleanse my face again using youth to the people because they've got this gel cleanse that's really nice and then i'm going in with this and it's just adding loads of nice hydration into my skin also festive nails i mean not festive because they're just a plain block color autumnal nails should i say um i got these done yesterday and i usually always wear just like a nude neutral color i get biab um and i was like you know what I'm going to push the boat out so i'm having this for probably the next two months in the run up to christmas and i really like it <laughs> i feel like it goes with knitwear like this really well and it's like the one beauty treatment that i still do i started doing it probably i mean it's over two years ago now actually and i never used to get my nails done and i just find that it's a really i just like it basically i'm not even going to justify it i like getting my nails done and that is that i really don't like i don't get my eyebrows done i don't get my hair done often i'm just using the walida nourishing day cream on top so yeah i just find that i am not very good when it comes to keeping up with my nails i'm quite heavy-handed so if i put normal nail polish on it literally lasts for two days and then i find that i'm spending way too long trying to make my nails look nice and it's just one of those things that is actually a lot easier to just go and see Sabrina, who is the person that does my nails, who's just really lovely, actually. Um, and obviously working from home, it's nice to kind of go there, have my nails done, catch up with her. Um, so yeah, anyway, <laughs> I'm really, really happy with them. In last week's vlog, I asked if there was anything particular that you'd like me to like speak about throughout these vlogs, because I felt like I was just sharing my routine and it's very similar and a bit boring. And one of the main things that came up on both here and Instagram was talking about how I've become self-employed and, you know, income and things like that. And basically, how I've made it happen. So that is what I'm going to include in this vlog. I realise that so many more people are thinking about doing this as a way to generate income instead of kind of sticking with the normal nine to five or employed job. They want that flexibility and ability to kind of choose when they work and what that looks like basically not having your life revolve around work am i saying this the right way around in this video i'm going to share a really detailed and honest rundown of what that looks like now um the realities of being self-employed i did actually do a sub stack on this as well i've been self-employed for a whole year now so i just shared kind of 10 things that i've learned and some reflections so i'll leave that linked below but i guess in this video i'll talk a little bit more about how i've actually made this happen because i think yeah a lot of us are just craving being able to work on our own schedules and have lives around work and i remember when i used to work fully employed full time i'd be leaving the house at eight o'clock leaving work at five to go straight to the gym coming home for like half six cooking my dinner and then just sitting on the sofa at half seven feeling absolutely exhausted and actually i was doing that alongside trying to like do other stuff as in i was like building my social profiles working with brands doing like i guess i was working a full-time role while whilst also building up my social media stuff so I'm just going to talk about that in a lot of detail, share the realities of it. I'm going to finish my makeup 
I'm actually volunteering today, so I'm going to do my volunteering from 12 to like one ish, half one. Come back, get a cup of tea, and chat to you about all the things that I just mentioned and self employed life. How many times I've tried to film this this afternoon is insane. I feel like there is just so much more to say about being self employed, going freelance, like the financial side of it, than I'd really thought about. So basically, I've made a list and yeah, I'm going to talk you through it now. I expect this to be quite long. I have, oh, if I can reach it, I've got myself a nice cup of tea because I thought <laughs> could be here a while. Um, yeah, there are so many factors that have enabled me to go self-employed and I think that part of me feels a little bit uncomfortable because there's definitely an element of privilege that's come with it given that like really small things like when I left uni I went back home for two years and was able to like basically I got married at 22 as well so <laughs> I feel like my journey to getting here will look very different to a lot of other people and I think that when we see people have these lives online that look like a life that we would want to live whether it's because they're self-employed they live a little bit slower or whatever there's also so much that we don't know in terms of how they've got there and just lots of different factors anyway so I'm just going to be I am just going to be really truthful and honest about my experience and what's got me here in the hope that it might be interesting I need to change my memory card somehow already so I'll get that so okay we're back let me give you a little bit of background I'm 28, I went to uni straight from sixth form, straight from uni I went into my first full-time job which was in social media marketing and I've actually stayed in marketing in like different areas of it for seven years before going self-employed so I had seven years experience in an industry that is very easy to then go freelance into so I think that that's a really important part of this because let's say I worked in a different job where you just couldn't be freelance, I don't know whether I'd be here now. So the career that I picked, although I don't think it suited me that well, um, I mean, it did at the time for some things, like it's, it's really weird. I studied psychology at uni, I'm a yoga teacher, I'm really interested in wellbeing and basically I've always known that I've wanted to do a job that would be of service and help others. At the same time, I started blogging and sharing online so that kind of took over a little bit and then influenced my career in ways that I probably didn't imagine that it would so straight from uni I was working a full-time job and alongside that I guess the hobby of creating content photography videography started to yeah it was it was my hobby I spent a lot of time creating imagery and writing and then putting it on the internet what this meant is that while I was working full time in various marketing roles, I had quite a few different jobs. I've worked in house, I've worked in agencies, I've worked for like different types of brands. I was also at the same time sharing online and I guess kind of building a bit of a presence to the point where brands wanted to work with me as well. So separately, that kind of accidentally became its own little business and it wasn't making a lot, like it really wasn't. Um, no way near enough to be like oh, I'm just gonna leave my job and do this and I didn't actually want to do that either I didn't want to have to rely on brand partnerships to go self-employed and do my own thing but it's definitely something that was there and enabled me to have a little bit more income and I want to say for like three or four years of my life I spent a lot of it just prioritizing work I was waking up at like five o'clock in the morning doing work after I'd finished my day job, I'd then go and write blog posts and do like Instagram content and all this. And I was just working. I didn't have any hobbies outside of work. I didn't really have that many friendships. A lot of my friends don't live at home. We've all kind of moved into different areas. So I wasn't making time to meet new people in the places that I lived. Um, and yeah, I just spent a lot of time working and honestly, it's really sad like when I look back and look at that version of myself that like my personality my kind of self-worth my a lot about me was tied up with work and productivity and I just couldn't rest so although 
I kind of had this passion and interest in well-being and I kind of knew all the facts, I wasn't applying it to myself and ultimately that led me to a point of burnout last year and it was at its peak last summer and I really then decided that I had two options. I either completely dropped everything that I was doing online creatively because I just couldn't keep that up with a normal job or I decide to just fully do all of my other stuff and go self-employed. And a year later, we're here. So obviously I picked the self-employed route. Another thing that I really need to mention here actually that massively helped me and I'd really recommend if you're thinking about going self-employed but you're not sure, especially from that like financial piece and perspective, I gradually reduced my hours down in my full-time job. So I started there five days a week. I did that for maybe coming up to two years. Then I went down to four days and then I went down to three days. So we came to an arrangement where I could gradually reduce my hours. And that was amazing. I mean, I was working way too much still outside of um, the employed job, but it did mean that first of all, I guess I was able to kind of use that additional time to build up the things so that when I did come self-employed, I didn't just have to start from the ground up. And I think it really actually gave me the confidence to realize that I am capable of going self-employed. Like I'd already been working from home at that point since 2020 when a whole host of us ended up working from home. So I realized that really what I needed was more flexibility in my routine. I wanted to have days that felt slower. I didn't want to feel rushed off my feet. I wanted to be able to prioritize creative projects and yoga. So going self-employed was just the right thing to do. And having that those few months where I was able to gradually lean into it and introduce myself to it really was a blessing because it did just make that whole process of leaving the stability and that kind of, I say stability like this because something I've realized, and I mean, I was made redundant in one job. Nothing is as stable as it seems. And obviously you do get all of the benefits when you're employed like holiday pay. If you're lucky enough, they might do some sort of like healthcare, um, the pension, all that sort of stuff. But ultimately, your time is not your own. And I was like, you know what? I kind of need my time to be my own now. Bearing in mind, we don't have any children. We don't even have any pets that depend on us. Now is the time to do it. I can see we're already on eight minutes. I did say this was gonna be a long one. When it comes to finances and income and what that looks like for me now, that's probably been one of the biggest changes because I really had to get used to the uncertainty that comes with being self-employed. That is probably the biggest difference. The fact that you go from having a monthly income that you absolutely know is gonna be that, like for the most part, to not knowing. And that was the biggest struggle for me. And I realized actually quite early on, it doesn't work for me to not know that I have some sort of income coming in. Like if I'm just depending on other people, whether that's to, come to my yoga classes or brands to reach out, it's just not gonna work for me. So I realized that I wanted to have a couple of marketing clients that could bring me some income. So I'm gonna share like the different income streams that I have now. The first one is from freelance marketing. So from that kind of seven years of experience of working with different brands, I have now gone on to be freelance for a few of them, a couple of them. So during the month some of my time is dedicated to working on their accounts on a freelance basis and i love it because it means that i get to kind of keep those skills i get to have a secure income and know what's coming in each month and it just makes my nervous system and my heart feel happy that i kind of know what's going on so that's a really key part of it and i found those quite quickly i got one through linkedin and i got one th and i got some through previous contacts so yeah, I think just over the years, kind of meeting people and making connections has been really valuable for that. The second thing is all of the kind of social media income. So that could be anything from me creating content for a brand and then them sharing that across their own socials, which again, I really love doing. It's really creative and fun for me and something that I do for my own channels anyway. So it's nice that it can kind of be part of my income stream. Another thing that I do is partner with brands. So if there's a particular brand that I already use or really like their product, I will create content for them, share that online, and I guess they will be a paid partner and sponsor me in that way. And what this allows me to do then is to have more free time to then create the organic content. And 
obviously it's just a dream to create video content for brands that I love and use anyway. So I feel, yeah, I feel really grateful that I have that. Another stream of income is anything yoga related for me. So any workshops that I do online, the yoga classes that I do weekly in person, I kind of keep yoga as a separate thing, but that's another area where I get money in every single month. And obviously I absolutely love teaching yoga. So it just feels like a win that it then supports me to live my dream life. And then something that I don't really speak about online, but I think I probably should do a little bit more because it is it has again enabled me to go self-employed and live a bit of a slower life where I don't have to worry quite as much about income is that through my 20s, I have just always prioritised saving over spending. I'm quite a frugal person. I buy a lot of my clothes secondhand now. We don't replace furniture and things. Like a lot of the furniture in our house is secondhand or hand-me-downs from family. I just, I really enjoy being resourceful in that way. And I've been with my husband for 13 years. So I think we both have these kind of long-term goals financially that make us think a lot more about where we're spending our money. Even small things like every single year when let's say the internet comes up to be renewed, we will try and get the cheapest deal. We're just always trying to be mindful of what we're doing with our money and the income that we do have because that can be really supportive or detrimental to like your future and your well-being. I really want to acknowledge the fact that I'm in an interested position where I got married at 22, I've been with my husband for all these years and because I guess we've been together and I mean only recently actually we've had shared bills, we lived apart for just over 10 years so actually we didn't even have that benefit of shared bills but we have been able to come together as a duo financially and think about our future in that sense which I think has encouraged me to save in the way that I did and then invest. Basically what I'm trying to get at is that together we do have investments that I don't take out of every month but I know that if I needed to money is there and yeah at the minute I kind of see it more as a pension thing which I guess supports me in that sense like if you're thinking about going self-employed that's another thing to think about but yeah I don't want to not mention it because it is a part of my life and actually a big reason that I've been able to go self-employed. Over the past year, I've really thought about my values and I guess explored a lot more what really matters to me, regardless of what the outside world is telling me. And I realised that a sense of security, thinking about my future and being able to work less so that I have more time to enjoy life, massively outweighs having new things and spending when we don't need to and actually experiences comes into that top one as well like we have spent a lot of money on travel this year a lot more than we ever have but that is an active decision we made because we knew it would bring us joy and we have cut back in other areas to make that happen reviewing finances getting clear on what your goals are and thinking about the future although it can be one of those things like i find it massively daunting like the fact that like i have to do all of the like taxes and things now yeah it is a lot, but having people in your life that can support you financially, not in terms of giving you money, but giving you knowledge, I found that really empowering. And it's actually made me realise that I can be self-employed, still make a good amount of money and save it so that I have a good future. And also just live in a, in a more mindful way, which means that I don't end up spending as much. Like this jumper, for example. This had the tag on. It was from H&M. It had the tag on. I don't know if um it's like this season or whatever this was on vinted for like 10 pounds <laughs> and i'm just that kind of person i've realized i love a bargain i love being frugal i love being resourceful it makes me happy and it just means that i'm able to put my money into other places and into other people as well like today volunteering something that i've always wanted to do is feel more connected to the community that i live in I now have the time to do that. I did actually write a substack with 10 things that I've learned since going self-employed, which definitely delves more into like the, I guess the practical lessons that I've learned actually since taking that step. Um, if you're thinking about going self-employed, I definitely recommend just trying to save up a little bit of money, maybe like three months worth of your bills, just so you've not got that panic because yeah, finances, and our nervous systems are so interlinked. I mean, it is for me anyway. And I know that I'd have just 
pushed myself into more burnout and felt really stressed if I didn't have any savings behind me when I took that step. I'd be recording for 20 minutes. <laughs> I don't know how much I'm gonna be editing out of this, but if you have any questions or yeah, any other thoughts on all of this, then let me know and I'll get back to you in the comments or maybe I'll include it in next week's vlog. But I do, th like for me, I just think it's so important to actually speak about how people are doing this and taking the steps to change their lives in this way. That piece of ca around kind of being more frugal and n thinking about my values in relation to money has been massive. Like even simple things, like I, we, I share a car with Jay and we have quite an old car. Like we've not got this, like a fancy new car and things when we probably could have. Like things like that have been decisions that we've actively made because we realised that we'd rather have more time, travel more, and feel more financially secure and stable for the future. I have no idea where this evening's gone. I feel like I've actually spent more time on my phone than I'd usually like and it's just left me feeling a little bit frazzled like you know when you get stuck kind of in not even a doom scroll I just kept picking up my phone I take my makeup off I think me and Jay are gonna watch Bake Off in bed tonight because we're both just feeling a bit knackered and also I can't remember if I mentioned it at the beginning of this vlog but we don't have any heating at the minute so we've got the electric blanket which will keep us warm we can just be cozy no doubt we will end up falling asleep at like i mean half an hour in because we don't usually watch tv in bed but yeah that'd be nice if you have any other questions or anything else you want me to cover let me know and i can do that in next week's vlog or i'll reply to the comment if there's like anything specific and yeah thank you for watching if you've made it this far and subscribe as well i've noticed a lot of people are watching my videos but you don't subscribe so um I mean, obviously, um, you don't have to. <laughs> God, I'm not very good at this, am I? Um, subscribe if you want to be notified for the next video, and I will see you then.